All right, man, Mike Belenti believes that the Detroit Lions could be a Super Bowl team if they add Quentin Williams. Now, apparently, Quentin Williams won four years, $110 million, a contract similar to Dexter Lawrence of the New York Giants. Uh, let's kind of just talk about uh, what he said real quick. Obviously, I don't have a computer in front of me right now, but just memory. So, basically, he said that uh, if I'm the Lions, I send the first and the third over there. I called immediately, and I'm willing to pay him. The four years, $110 million that he's looking for or around that ballpark, right? And obviously, you would agree to the contract before you trade for him, right? And check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist, by the way. Don't forget, you can follow us on TikTok as well. Hit the link tree. Find us everywhere from Spotify, TikTok, Instagram, the whole nine, right? And, uh, you know, then he goes in and basically says that once you make this move, you're not thinking about you know, winning a division title. You're not winning, thinking about hosting a playoff game, winning a playoff game, winning a home playoff game. You ain't thinking about winning a... a the conference title, you thinking about competing with the Eagles and the 49ers and the big boys of the NFC and actually going to a Super Bowl and competing for a Super Bowl, right? And he says, you know, who is other who who are aggressive who is aggressive when it comes to doing this? Harvey Roseman of the, of the Philadelphia Eagles and a lot of the moves that he made. It was a very aggressive alpha move drafting Jalen Hurts. A lot of people didn't understand how aggressive that was. You know, trading for Darius Slay. I mean, moving up and getting a, 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 a what's the kid name from a, a, a Jalen Carter drafting Jordan Davis. And I thought the Lions possibly was moving back up for Jordan Davis in the 2022 draft. Can't say last year no more because we got 2023. And um, he's right. He's made a lot of moves. I mean, James Bradbury. I mean, you could just keep going on and on and on and on and on like Erica Badu. Right. And, you know, then he went on to say, yeah, who else is aggressive? Does John Lynch and the 49ers. Eh? He's definitely right. He took uh, that rusty penny, that dusty dollar that was behind the couch. He cleaned it off and put it back on the strip with Mark Mayhew. And Mayhew is now with the Washington Commanders, which who knows? Josh Harris, whatever his name is, the 76ers now owns the uh, commander. So you never know what's going to happen with Martin Mayhew there. But apparently, you know, he dusted that dusty hot dollar off and put it back on that strip. And now Mayhew's getting another job. You didn't know Martin Mayhew was part of the uh, 0-16 Lions and was allowed to get an upgrade, okay? Um, somebody ordered their girlfriend edible arrangement across the street, hilarious. But, uh, and I say that, I say that kind of like sarcasm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, and he was, he finessed his way with Mr. Ford to get uh, and blame Matt Millen, and Matt Millen came back year, uh, a few years ago and did an interview with Peter King by saying that, hey, you know, they lied and put everything on me. They were helping me make these decisions and talking me out of drafting DeMarcus Ware and drafting Charles Rogers. So, he, you know, Martin May finessed Mr. Ford and was allowed to uh, uh, get a promotion after going on 16. And little known fact by Lion fans, sometimes it go little, you know, you don't know if people know it. They gave him a promotion. But nonetheless, he went, you know, he was under the tutelage of John Lynch. He's right. John Lynch was, they season was saved last year with Christian drafting Christian McCaffrey. That was more important than Brock, Pur just as important as Brock Purdy because if Christian McCaffrey not there. I don't think they make that run in the playoffs last year. But, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, he's, you know, John Lynch aggressive. They've done some great things. And, you know, they had to trade DeForest Buckner, I think, to the Indianapolis Colts. And did, you know, you reload and cross that defensive line. Um, in addition to reloading across that defensive line, they, I mean, they added the kid from Philadelphia. The one Hargraves, we thought that the Lions might have interest in. So they keep ticking and they keep going. Can't knock them. But, uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, uh, do I agree? I mean, I think the expectations is, is almost there. I mean, um, I think the expectations you get Quentin Williams, I think he had 12 sacks last year. Um, yeah, I think that's the expectation it did. I mean, obviously, if Levi Onizor can get you anything, if you tell me which one is more important at this point, getting another receiver or getting Quentin Williams, which one, if I had to spend the bag on there, if I couldn't get both, guess what? I'm going to go ahead and get Quentin Williams. It's a big need. It was a need that wasn't met last year, an interior lineman, um, and it cost the Lions the playoffs. It cost them a run game. They filled the inside linebacker position eventually whenever Jack Campbell's ready to step up. They filled that position, right? Um, and now you get somebody like Quentin Williams, anything that Aline McNeil gives you is just butter, baby. Anything that Anazorki can give you is just butter, baby. And we tend to know once you sit there and spend the money and, and, and plug a need like that, it takes a lot of pressure off the defense. But what's going to happen is that bonus chip that you got with Anazorki now, Anazorki, now he's going to perform. 
Now, if you been banking on him to perform this year, he won't perform because that's what you're banking on. But now it's like, oh, it's just it's just icing on the cake that he performed. So I agree with Mike Valenti. That's how good Quentin Williams is. I pay him. I send the first and the third. I maybe even just re maybe give him a little bit more. It'd be interesting if you held on to DeAndre Swift. That could have sweetened the pot as well. But that, that position is too important. You need penetration. If you're able to get some type of penetration, he can penetrate, stop the run. If you can get him to just to penetrate and stop the run, just penetration, Aiden Hutchinson is probably is guaranteed healthy without a rookie slump, sophomore slump. He guaranteed 12 sacks. All right. You know, it, you know, that's one thing that was missing last year. He had to go inside, outside. Whoever played on the opposite side is probably guaranteed another 10 or 12 sacks. Honestly, they, they might even if they talented. You know, they might even be able to get 15 or 17 because guess what? You trying to stop Quentin Williams on the inside and then you trying to chip and stop Aiden Hutchinson on the other on the other side. So that's how important that position is. And I mean, shit, if Anazorki can, can be what he was in that preseason game versus Pittsburgh, we thought he was going to be that penetrator, that dog in the middle. I mean, shit, the expectation for the Lions should be great. It should be great. I agree with that. What he will do offensively, defensively for the Lions, he give you a run stopper, he give you off in the middle, he give you somebody that can penetrate and get upfield. The best type of pressure is not from the edge. It's from the it's from collapse, it's from breaking the pocket within, right in the quarterback's face. So yeah, I agree with Mike Valenti, dude. I'll do that shit in a minute. And I understand why people say, oh, maybe not Lamar or whatever like that, but one thing about Lamar, everybody gonna be better. That's the difference. Everybody gonna be better. With Quentin Williams, he gonna make everybody better. He gonna get a deep offense, extra possessions. He gonna he gonna make the linebackers better. He gonna make the DBs better. He gonna make Aiden. Him and Aiden gonna make each other better. Whoever on the other side, they gonna prosper. And you put Anzorki in that mix down there. They just went from you know oh uh, she you know they just went from the average what from six to seven. I say from what five to seven is the average female because you know we number females they don't either you can get it or you can't all right that's really much and maybe you in that gray area yeah maybe maybe if I'm drunk and I ain't got nothing else going on but from that five to seven average range you go from that like oh uh, yeah I think the Lions could compete this year but it wouldn't surprise me if they won't till you go to being a dime piece of the NFL or at least the I said the NFL you go from being a dime piece you go from that 8 to 10 range. That's a dime. You go from that very, very, very attractive range. And we all know the NFL season brings humble times. Bad times is coming, coming. Dollars with, you know, because, you know, everybody fall off. Some people rise up. You don't know what the rookie's going to do. New paces and new places. Some succeed, some don't. So I agree with Mike Valenti on this one, dude. That's something I would do. You know, I don't know about giving up multiple first, but I'll do a first and a third. If they want a little bit more, I'm willing to do it because of the impact that it was going to have. So I'm all in. Uh, he made all pro last year, 12 sacks. Huge part of what they've done. But I, I think the Jets, are, you know, they smart enough to pay him. But then again, you know, they restructured Aaron Rodgers' contract. Probably turned some shit to bonus money to make room for him. But if not, I'm willing to pull up the compensation, whatever damn near it costs. But hey. Check out Detroit Lions Talk playlist. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. The subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, the whole nine. Link tree is the first link in the description. Peace.